So a number of years ago, two friends of mine uh, went to a warmer country than Ireland. Uh, I think it was Rome. I think it was Rome. And um, we'll call them Noel and Steve. So Noel and Steve, there they are in, in Rome. And Steve then, because of the warmer climate there, decides to get himself a baseball cap because it was sunny and warm and so on and so forth. Now, Steve is a rather sizable gentleman and has a proportionately sizable cranium. So has a which is a nice way of saying he's got a big head. So, so um, he went in hat shopping anyway and got himself, I, I don't know, an average, a medium, maybe even a large hat. But yeah. Uh, and a day or later, and two days later, and three days later, he was just complaining all the time. He genie, he said, I've just got such a headache. Right, I've got such a headache. Must be, the, must be the heat or dehydration, or I don't know. But every time you take off the hat, Noel spotted that he had this red line right across there just and right and he put and she said is there any chance that maybe the hat's just a bit a bit too a bit too small you know no no it's fine it's fine oh my head really the headache every evening and uh lo and behold anyway about a week after they came back he said you know uh, I was back here in Ireland, always grand. I put on the hat again, I got a headache again. It's actually the hat, the hat's too small. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, yeah, go figure, wow. <laughs> there you go. So point being, point being, at times we can be our own worst enemies. You know, at times that like, we do something that, that hurts us and we're entirely unaware of it. And sometimes even if someone points it out, we don't spot it. It's, it, it's, it that's, a, that's a difficult part of, of ministry, if I'm honest. Where, where you have to walk with people, and sometimes the issue is glaringly obvious, but you can't necessarily say it until the person is ready, you know? So you can't, you can't just go on fixing people, you know? You have to wait until, until the person is ready, okay? So you can imagine Jesus as well, as, as he walks around, I mean, he who can see hearts and knows souls, but he also knows when the person is ready or when they're not, you know? So he, he didn't go around just immediately kind of reading your soul, reading your soul, you need to change this, you need to change that, you need to change the other, we're going to hell, purgatory, I don't know. Um, you know, like, he, that's not what he did. But when he talked to people, he'd take them where they were at and then maybe indicate the next step. You know, sometimes, like with the scribes and Pharisees, he had to give them a bit of a shake up because not only were, were they uh, a little askew in their approach, they were leading others as well. They were leading others down the wrong path. So, yeah, he called them out on being hypocrites, whitewashed tombs, vipers, and so on. Okay, again, not, that, that's not him losing the plot. That's him wake, trying to wake them up. Do you not understand if you don't change, people mightn't get into heaven? This is serious, okay? Cop on. So, anyway. So, uh, Jesus sees Zacchaeus up the tree. Uh, and I don't know, again, uh, it's just my imagination, but I always imagine a, a Danny DeVito type character, you know, about yay high, kind of barely any hair at all, Kind of, kind of awkward climbing up the tree, and you know, kind of, kind of, legs can't reach around. It's getting kind of boosted up by the, you know, some wall or a cart or a donkey or something, just trying to kind of lift T Rex arms and making his way up. And then he spots Jesus. Okay, and 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 Jesus. Keep in mind. See, when we read the story in primary school, it's it's uh, we get a, a child's understanding of this, right? So Jesus. Uh, sees this small little man up a tree and says, I'm going to have dinner at your house. So they go and have burgers and then everyone's happy. Um, Zacchaeus, again, keep in mind always these, the historical context of what's happening here. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which means he's a Jew working for the Romans. He was hated. He was hated by them. He's like, you're a complete turncoat. You are working for the occupational force. These people who are, who are uh, enslaving us, taking our freedom, you actually work for them, get paid for them, and then steal from your own. Because the uneducated people who couldn't read and write are, are coming in, they have to pay their taxes, but they don't know how to work out percentages. Uh, you know, even like the, the balances and weighing scales, there, was, there were ways of, of rigging those as well, you know. So he could, I mean, if he's just taking an extra 2% from everyone, would anybody notice? An extra 2%? You know, even a weighing scale is 2%, you're not, you're not going to spot it like, but it adds up. Point being, they were hated. So he would have been despised. So even if he couldn't see, no one was going to say, here, my friend, stand up on my box. Stand up on my horse. They'd say, get out of my sight, you, you traitor. You know, like they would have, so, so, this, so this, is, this is who we're talking about here, Zacchaeus. Not the cute little Danny DeVito, but um, an, a mean little Danny DeVito. Okay, so, climbs up the tree. And then 
Jesus reached the spot, looked up at him, and there isn't a, there isn't a conversation between Jesus and him. Jesus just sees him and knows him. He doesn't have to kind of do an interview and find out you know, where we're at, who are you against, sorry, what's your, what's your uh, occupation? You know, there's no kind of interview process here at all. It's immediately, Zacchaeus, first he says his name, okay? Zacchaeus, come down, hurry, hurry, right? Because I must stay at your house today, I must. All the words here are so important, right? It's, it, it, it could have been, my friend, are you free for, you know, might I have lunch at your house today? But it's no, by name, and I must. So there's an urgency, an urgency about letting Jesus in, okay? Now that's, I think that word is so, so important, urgency. That it's urgent, it's urgent that we change, it's urgent that we convert, it's urgent that we start praying, it's urgent that we, we turn our lives around while we can because today is very short and this period of our lives is very short and before you know it, lads, you're going to be 42, wondering how you got so fat. <laughs> before, before, before you know it, before you know it, I, and then apparently people who are a little older than me have told me that yeah, your 40s just fly, and then the 50s equally, and then voila, you're retired. How did that happen? So time, time passes very, very quickly. It's so important, I think, to, to have a, a, a profound sense of urgency when it comes to, to uh, our prayer life, our walk with the Lord. Okay, so Zacchaeus was his own worst enemy. Right? What he was doing was dishonest, and he knew it. He knew it. You, that, that, that's how he was dishonest. He knew the system, so he knew how to kind of not, not bleed people, but just take a few drops from each of them. So he knew how the system worked. He's gone into a sinner's house, the people said. And Zacchaeus stood his ground and said, Look, sir, I'm going to give half my property to the poor. Okay? Now, just it, as, as the Americans would say, you do the math. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to give half my property to the poor. So now you're down 50%. You're down to 50% of your total wealth. And if I have cheated someone, I'll give them back four times as much. That's going to leave you with practically nothing, if you can even remember how much you defrauded people. That's going to leave you with practically nothing. And Jesus doesn't say, ah, these are only cheap words, my friend. Jesus actually seems to believe him. Today, salvation has come into this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek out and save what was lost. So, it's, I, I think, again, it's very, very helpful to, to look at these stories and look at who we identify with. Look at who or how the gospel is relevant to us. So it's always kind of dangerous to read these things just as a mere text um, or a story from 2,000 years ago. This is the Word of God, right? So it wants to tell us something here and now, today. In our, in our first reading, we have this comparison. So Eliezer, one of the Maccabees, is, has this very sinister but subtle temptation, right? All he has to do is eat a little pig meat and he's good to go. Just a little bit of a chop, right? Small little bit of sausage and you're good to go. You will not die. Just eat the sausage and you're fine. And his friends encourage him to, just, just pretend. Just eat a little bit of it, put it in the mouth, say nothing, spit it out the side, or when you're drinking, back into the glass, whatever you have to do, backwash the whole lot. Just pretend, and you'll be fine, because they actually liked him. They wanted to save his life. But he knew by doing so, while yes, he might save his life, he would give scandal. Because then all the, other, all the other Jews out there suffering for their faith would say, well, Il, even Il, Eliezer gave in. So why should we hold our ground? You know, it's, just, it's too hard. It's too hard. It's just easier be like everyone else. It's easier do what the world says is popular and what the world says uh, is, is, is politically correct and all those kind of things without actually asking ourselves, what does God want? What is God's word? What is God's command here? Not what is politically correct or what is popular. What does God ask of us? And so he knew that if he had saved his life, but by a pretense, that that would have given scandal. Scandal is when we, it's, it's an attitude or a behavior that leads others to sin. So 
he knew what was, so then he, he, he walks freely to, as it's called, the block. And uh, apparently at the block, one is beaten to death with clubs. And so it was. But if you listen to his last words, so he, say, he said, as he groans aloud, the Lord, whose knowledge is holy, and he sees clearly that though I might have escaped death, whatever ag- agonies of the body I now endure under this bludgeoning, in my soul I am glad to suffer because of the awe which he inspires in me. This is how he died, leaving his death as an example of nobility and a record of virtue, not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation. So it looked like he lost, he died. But what he actually, he act, what he actually gave was, was an inspiration. It was, like, it was hope. It was, it was an example. In, the way, in all faiths, or even in all causes in general, if the cause has a martyr, it really inspires people. And this, this works also, it can work also negatively, like if, if, if there's a, a pro-choice argument and they say, well, you know, people are dying because they can't have abortion. That, that's one of those really emotionally compelling arguments, you know, uh, because you've got a martyr. If someone is willing to give their life for this, that says an awful lot about it. So you've got Eliezer here, who's willing to give his life to be a good example. You have Zacchaeus, who had freedom, had power, had ability, and used his life for an awful long time to be a disastrous example of, 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 of a Jew. I mean, a traitor. But then Jesus enters his life, and everything changes. Everything changes radically and quickly. So who, who are we? Who am I in this story? Or what in me needs to change? And what needs to change now? Where is it like something that needs to change urgently? Like, you know, it's, uh, when it comes to, to prayer, when it comes to conversion, it, it is easy to sit on the fence. And it's easy to sit on the fence and not even be aware that we're sitting on the fence. We can be up the sycamore tree and not even aware that we're up a tree because we're, we're finally the same height as everyone else. So it looks okay. But, but in us, what actually needs to change? Do you know, if, if, if my prayer life, if my prayer time is just... If it's empty, if it's just as we like meditated yesterday, if it's just me thinking of all the bad things in the world and all the bad things in my life, that's not prayer. Raising your gaze, raise your eyes. If there's someone that needs to be forgiven, if there's someone that I find it hard to love, you know, where is that? Where is that urgent change needed now? And as we were saying yesterday as well, to, to pray that with that realization that without God's help, we don't stand a chance. Without the grace of God, we can't do these things. So then I recognize what I need to do, but I also recognize that I need God to do it. And that then we, we walk with him towards virtue and ultimately towards heaven. So, Lord, we pray for this, this radical change, this radical conversion in each one of us. For you, Lord, have not given up on us. For you promise us that you have not come to condemn us but you've come to seek out and save what was lost. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us for uh, this homily via YouTube, via our live stream, or via the various podcasts. Uh, thank you so much for, for being part of our extended family, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, if these have helped you in some way, if they have they've blessed you, if they've helped you uh, in your faith in some way, in order to uh, facilitate our mission and, and, and encourage our mission, allow our mission to continue, uh, you might consider uh, maybe donating towards a uh, holy family mission, towards our formation of our young people here in uh, a place near Clonmel uh, in County Tipperary in, in Ireland. So if you wish, you can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie, and there's a donate tab there, and we greatly appreciate any help that you can give us. Obviously, we'd be delighted for your prayers as well. Please do pray for us. Uh, this is not just <coughs> a battle against flesh and blood but also obviously we're engaged in a whole spiritual battle here as well so we need your help uh, on the spiritual front as well as on the material front in order to to uh, allow our mission to continue so thank you so much for your for your generosity and for your support and be assured of our prayers especially on wednesday when we offer our mass and our prayers for all of our friends and benefactors so god bless you and we'll hopefully see you or hear you uh, on a future podcast for homily god bless